uh, game creator for the game Onslaught version 1.0 or you know any of the later versions if you're playing it later and uh, I am making this video so that I can maybe perhaps explain and advertise the game for people who like Warcraft 3 custom maps and I didn't want to make too many classes for this game because I wanted to keep it really simple because I'll notice a lot of Warcraft 3 maps will have a very large number of heroes to choose from and I didn't want to be you know sacrificing any uniqueness to each of my classes while at the same time not making them really boring so you can you, you can actually level each of these classes up to 100 and at level 33 66 and 99 you get to level up your special ability now the uh, the heroes that are available are the Berserker, which is my melee class. It has a lot of AoE abilities and heavy and fast hitting melee attacks. Um, you also have the Marine, which is a very interesting class that I was very happy about putting in there. It was really originally going to be my ranged class, and I was, and I thought, you know, what better way to make a really fast shooting class than to give it a machine gun? Um, I also made a magic class, which is the sorcerer, and he's got like you know a bunch of really fun spells like flame strike and chain lightning, and all these spells are like maximized from the normal Warcraft 3 style. And uh, you know they, they they all have a flame strike, but it'll be about three times as big, and, and you can it has no cooldown, so you can just kind of melt the entire our field. And uh, yeah, and then I also made a necromancer, which uh, has no real abilities of its own other than to summon more humans and blink around the field. Uh, I also made the um, Engineer, which is an, a unit that can build structures and place turrets and s drop a factory that can build a bunch of robots, things like that. And the last class that I made wasn't originally going to be in there, but I added it because of a friend of mine. He wanted to see something like this, and it's a shape-shifting class. It's called the Feral Druid. And due to Warcraft 3 game mechanics, I wasn't able to give it as many shape-shifting things as I wanted. I originally wanted to model it up to the World of Warcraft Druid, allow him to turn into, you know, a balance, you know, a, a, a boomkin that could shoot magic and then, you know, switch over into a tank form and then switch into, like, a, a DPS, you know, kind of a cat form and then switch out and go into his healer form. But the way it works is that whenever you learn to spell, you know... Anyways, this Feral Druid is a really interesting class, nonetheless, because it has a, a very heavy hitting and but slowed in speed bear, which can kind of kind of tank his way through, and he can cast Rejuvenation himself to heal himself. And let's say he gets uh, you know matched by let's say another an anti-hero of the game, he can then you know switch over into like you know wolf form and you know become suddenly a single single target DPS form and do a whole ton of damage. Okay, those are the classes. And uh, I also added a, uh, a leaderboard for kills, so that if you want to keep track of how many, you know, um, units you killed, it has a color-coded and class-titled, you know, leaderboard for you to see. You know, okay, I'm player one. That means I'm red, and I am the berserker, and I have, you know, 750 kills. So you can kind of see how many kills you got in comparison to other people. Kind of maybe give a little bit of a competition element to it because you aren't actually going to be playing against other players in this game. This is a kind of a team game. Um, you have four enemies, and they are the actual armies from Warcraft 3. The Night Elf Sentinels, you have the Undead Scourge, you have the Human Alliance, and you have the um, the Orc Horde. Okay, so, you know, and they're all in different corners of the map, and I adjusted the um, terrain and all that so that it looks like that's where they're from. You've got the Undead with a bunch of green fog and dead trees and hills and broken down castles and stuff like that. And I made it so that there is an increasing difficulty with the game as it continues to progress. And um, it's pretty fun fighting against these armies. It's not going to be like you, 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 it's really hard at first and then it becomes easy. It's going to be that's an increasing difficulty as you go on. You can still, there's still a chance that you could die, but you, but as you gear yourself, you know, it becomes a lot, uh, become, you, you feel a sense of reward for killing the units that you're killing. And, um, something I should mention, which makes this game really fun and is also the, um, the basis for its title, um, is the Onslaught Timer. And I think it's a 12 minute timer. And it counts down from about 30 seconds into the game. And when it gets to zero, all of your enemies around your base have been building. Um, massive armies that have not been attacking the center of the map throughout the whole game. You've got all kinds of units like you know, like the Ghouls and the and the Crypt Fiends, and you've got uh, you know Banshees. They're all attacking the center of the base, and you go around. You have to defend the towers, or they'll die. But during the onslaught timer, when that hits zero, 
if you're not defending the base, it assuredly will, you know, lose all of its towers, and you, your castle will be destroyed. So you have to be there. And you know, also with the timer, if if as if the, all these units attacking you weren't enough, a random boss from one of the teams will come. For example, one of the bosses is Grom Hell, Hellscream. He is the Blade Master, but I you know redid the model and everything, so he comes in and he's super powered and he basically just cuts through stuff. And you have to kill him. And if you happen to kill him, he will drop. Well, you if you you better kill him or else you know, you'll probably lose. But you know, if when you kill him, he will drop you know about 150 wood. Which, uh, you know, I'll explain in a second what it's for. And he will um, also drop uh, an item that is uh, specific to what he is and also help your character to progress in the game and, you know, kind of be like a little bit of an artifact. I have given your characters, upon when you select them, a weapon that has no abilities and they get an armor piece that has no abilities. Now, the armors, and they allow you to upgrade the armor at level 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100. And they let you upgrade the weapon at 25, 50, 75, and 100 for various lumber costs, which is why lumber comes into this issue. And, uh, you know, you have to kill heroes, the anti-heroes, you know, the, 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 the demon hunter and the archmage and all that. Those guys will drop lumber when they die, and so will the bosses of the game. And when they die, they'll drop a big slew of lumber, and you can use that to upgrade your gear. Okay, I'm going to talk about the few other items that are in the game, and as you're going throughout the game, you can attack the enemy's buildings, because um, I have all the triggers in the game so that they don't spawn units, they just issue an order to build the unit. So if you actually go out and destroy a barracks, that barracks will die, and it won't be able to summon any more units to attack the center of the map. It, the, the triggers won't allow it. So. Um, if you go out there and attack a building, you'll notice that your attacks aren't doing a lot of damage. And there are items that allow you to increase your ability to deal damage to buildings. And you can purchase these at the, at the base or at the four neighboring towns, which have also a few items that cannot be purchased at the mi middle base. Which gives you a reason to leave the base to go to those towns. Recently, near the end of the making of the game, I noticed that it was very annoying when I was out in the middle of the orc base, you know, chopping up their buildings and everything, killing them all. I was in my own little world, and then I noticed that, you know, I lost the game. It was like, you lose, your castle was destroyed. And I'm like, what the hell? I thought, you know, there were plenty, I thought all my towers were alive. And then, you know, I, I was always getting, sorry, got, I got really paranoid after that. I was always checking my towers, and I was just like, this is really annoying. So I made a multi-board, which allows you, which shows you where the tower is, the name of the, you know, southeast, northeast, whatever, and it tells you the percentage life it has. And, uh, you know, you can close that or open it. It's a multi-board, and that's what they're for. And, you know, you can use that to basically keep track of your, of your base without actually having to go around and check all the life of the towers individually. And you're like, well, what if a tower dies? What am I going to do then? And I'm going to say, well, if you go and rebuild the tower there, it'll it'll show back up on the leader on the multi board. So you know, let's say the tower dies, southeast tower dies, it's at zero, and you're like, damn it, you know, my tower's dead. Then you go and you know, you kill the boss, and the bosses, I, I forgot to mention, all of the bosses drop a defense tower because chances are during an onslaught you're going to lose at least one tower. So you know, you go and take that tower and you put it on the uh, spot that the other one was destroyed and it'll start, you know, it'll show up on the multi-board again. So you can make this game a little bit more complicated than it's really intended to be if you want to. And uh, that's what I was trying to do. So, um, And I'm not done yet, so I might add a few secret ending kind of stuff to the game. But uh, that's pretty much how it works. You got the final gear pieces with the special abilities. And I guess I'll ruin one of the special abilities that will inspire you to maybe play the Marine. Because I kept him very StarCrafty. Um, the Marine's weapon uh, actually can cast a nuclear warhead. It, uh, it isn't exactly like what it was like in StarCraft, but he goes, you know, he targets something and it drops a ward and he can run around and whatever and get the hell out of the way. And it'll basically kind of do a really shitty kind of nuclear warhead. But it plays all the sound effects and does the whole nuclear launch detected and everything. So, you know, but it'll blow up an entire group of units. That's really useful. But there's going to be a few secrets in the game. I might add a kind of a twist ending, so you're going to have to play it and beat it to see what really happens. And, uh, you know, I hopefully it'll be fun enough to play a couple times before you're kind of bored of it. That's all I really ask. And, uh, you know, I, you should try it out. And, you know, go to filefront.com. I have my link here in the video. And, you know, you can you can try my uh, try the game, download it, and host it. I would host it myself, but you see I have a modem which won't let me uh, host games in Warcraft 3, so I have to give it to you guys. And I figured if you watch the video, it might kind of pique your interest a little bit. So, 
Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy it, and at the very least, gives you at least one good play. And uh, if you like it, leave some feedback. You know, let me know. You know, send me a message on YouTube or something like that. And uh, you know, any any criticism, whether it's friendly or you know horribly uh, unnecessarily cruel, will be uh, appreciated. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching my video, and thanks for playing my game. If you decide to even take it that far, so thank you.